What's up guys, Dalton Smith from MPI Productions, and today we're going to be talking about thick electric skateboards. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff with these guys this year, so we wanted to start with an unboxing video just to show you what the boards look like and how to go about setting it up and getting it going right out of the box. First things first, you're going to need a friend because these boxes are very heavy. We're going to be unboxing the Big Daddy skateboard today. This is an off-road monster that's going to allow you to go up to 22 miles an hour on the pavement, and you're going to be able to plow through any terrain from sand, dirt, grass, you name it, this thing is going to go through it. Go ahead and get yourself a knife or a razor blade and cut the tape on the edges of the box, but be careful to make sure that you don't damage any of the equipment inside the box. Once you get it open, you're going to notice that you have the board right on top, so go ahead and get that out and put that to the side for now. Next, we're going to have another box inside that's going to contain your battery. This is super heavy. It's probably about as heavy, if not heavier, than the board itself. So once you get it out and cut it open, you are going to have your battery, which is going to be the part what runs your board. So when you first get it out of the box, you want to go ahead and throw your battery on the charger because it's going to take about 10 to 12 hours for the initial charge. So go ahead and locate the charger inside of the box and you're going to see that there is a small flap on the side of your battery and you're just going to pull this back, plug the charger into the wall, plug it into the battery and you're going to get a red light. As soon as the battery is completely charged, you're going to get a green light. And now let's go ahead and get the rest of the stuff out of the box. You're going to have the thick electric skateboard remote a bag full of tools, an extra belt, and a 9 volt battery. We always recommend that you have an extra 9 volt battery because God forbid you're in the middle of nowhere and your remote dies, so go ahead and have two or three backups on you all the time. Next is going to be your spare belt. This is a belt driven vehicle, so it's going to be pretty easy to replace if one snaps. We have a little bag of tools. Uh, we'll be doing a how-to video here shortly on how to replace the belt, but you always want to keep your belt with you your bag of tools, and an extra battery for the remote. Next, we're going to talk about the remote control. Inside of your remote, you're going to have a small little foam piece, and then you're going to have the plug for your 9-volt battery. So go ahead and get your 9-volt, line it up for the positive and negative sides, pop it in there, and then inside of the remote, you're going to have a three-way switch, and this is going to allow you to control the speed of the board. We seriously recommend starting on slow for everyone, and go ahead and put it on the slow speed, which is going to be all the way forward towards the front of the remote. Next is going to be medium speed, dead in the center, and then all the way back is going to be your high speed. Make sure again, slow speed all the way to the front. Pop your battery in there once it's plugged in. You're going to put this foam right in here so your battery's not bouncing around, and then just slide the cover back on. Now your remote is ready to go. You have it on slow speed, and we're going to talk about getting the remote set up to the board here shortly. So just to make sure you have everything out of the box, you're going to have your board, your battery, the charger for your battery, your remote, a 9 volt battery for the remote, a bag full of tools, a belt, and your instruction manual. Now we've got your battery on the charger and again it needs to go for about 12 hours. Once your battery is fully charged, you're going to have a green light on the charging box and you're ready to go. So go ahead and unplug it, flip the cover back just to make sure no dust or sand gets in there. What I do is I grab the board and I'll flip it on its back and I take the battery and I line up the wire that you have hanging out of one side with the wire that you're going to have hanging out of the board. Line up the plugs and slide them together. Next you're going to take your battery and tip it down into the mount making sure that the wire is clear and tucked down within the little opening and you're going to get it all the way flush. You have two release pins on the other end of the battery. So you're going to pull both of those release pins and drop it down into the board making sure that you get both of them securely tightened in there. Now you've got your battery on the board and you're locked up. Locate the on and off switch which is going to be on the underside of the board next to your battery. Press on and you're going to notice the lights on the top of the board light up from red to green. That means you have a full charge. Go ahead and use the handle and flip it back over onto the wheels. Next go ahead and grab your remote. You're going to have three settings on here. Center is going to have a circle and that means you're off. All the way back is a one and this is going to mean that you're going to be on daylight riding. It's going to save battery because it will not turn on the lights on the front. If you're going to be riding at night, you're going to put this all the way forward and that's going to put you on number two and give you LED lights on the front of your remote. You also have an LED headlight and a red brake light on the board. This is going to be located underneath the board next to your battery and you'll see a small white switch. Flip it to turn it on and then flip it again to turn it off. And now you're going to be connecting the remote to the board. If we're riding at daylight, we're going to press down to the number one. In about three seconds, it's going to lock you up with the board and you're ready to go at that point. 
All of the FIC remotes can control any FIC electric skateboard, so do be careful when you're trying to link up multiple boards at the same time because you can actually get one remote on another board and then you're controlling each other. However, once it gets out of range, which is about two feet, the remote will stop controlling the board. So now we're gonna talk about acceleration and braking. Right here you have your trigger. So you're gonna slightly pull back and that's gonna give you some acceleration. Whenever you wanna stop, we recommend that you slowly let off the acceleration because if you let off all at once, it's gonna lunge you forward. When you're sitting still and you begin to accelerate, you want to brace with your back foot just to make sure it's not going to shoot out from under you and throw you back. When you let off the acceleration, the board is going to slow itself down nice and slow on its own, but if you need to stop yourself faster, there is a braking system. All you're going to do is take your remote and get the trigger and push it forward. This is going to initiate the braking system, which is going to slow the belt. For steering your board, it's going to be all in your legs and in your body weight. When you're riding your board, if you're regular footed like me, I'm going to have my right foot in the back and if I want to do a left turn, I'm going to grab the rail. However, I can also grab the handle under the board that's mostly used for carrying but also comes in really handy if you need to do a tight turn. If I need to do a turn to the right, I'm going to reach around my backside and grab the rail. Take your time. Go out to the beach, start in a nice grassy field and get used to the acceleration, get used to braking practice doing some turns, and just figure the board out. You don't want to rush because with any action sport, it's very fun, but if you don't take the right precautions, you're going to get injured. I always like to remind people to be careful when you're going from the grass to the pavement or vice versa because you're dealing with two completely different amounts of traction. When you're on the pavement, the wheels are able to grab very well, you're not going to slide, and it's going to be very reactive turning. When you're in the grass, you're going to be kind of bouncing around, slipping and sliding, so if you go from the grass to the pavement, it's going to grip so fast the board may shoot out from under you. And if you go from the pavement to the grass, it may be too much of an adjustment and then you lose speed and wipe out. So take your time, have fun. We want to see your photos and videos, so be sure to upload them. Hashtag FICUSA. We're really excited to be working with these guys this year. We have a ton of awesome projects in the works, so keep an eye, check back, and get ready for some awesome stuff with FICUSA and MPI Productions.